Welcome, rail fans, to another Frog and Flange video. This video is a marked departure from our usual programming in that it features a non-railway topic. We document here some of the sights and sounds of our visit to the former Canadian Niagara Power Company, CNPC, located at Niagara Falls, Ontario. Many YouTube videos on CNPC focus almost exclusively on the wonderful laser light show. By contrast, We'll focus mostly on the beautifully preserved 120-year-old architecture, machinery, equipment, and controls that were in use until about 15 years ago. This is by no means a replacement for a visit to the CNPC station. For those residing within traveling distance, we hope that these images will whet your appetite to experience the CNPC generating station in person. Constructed of locally quarried Ontario limestone, and situated on the banks of the Niagara River immediately above the falls, the Bose art style structure features order, symmetry, and grand design elements. Building and construction materials and equipment materials include limestone, marble, and gleaming brass, and copper. To see the interior of the main generating hall is, frankly, impressive. In this view of the station's front facade, we see the plant's forebay, where water flows from the river into the station through a row of huge underwater gates stretched out along the 600-foot-long front wall. This close-up view shows the name of the present-day owner of the station, which is the Niagara Parks Commission. Historically, though, the power station's name is the Canadian Niagara Power Company. It is often known as the Rankin Power Station, so-called for the co-founder William Rankin, Looking slightly to the right of the previous view, can be seen a series of graceful limestone arches under which the water flows from the river towards the plant. This shows the front facade from a close-up perspective. Entrance for tours is here on the generator hall's north end. Above the door a large stone sculpture can be seen featuring a native. Accompanying the unidentified native person, we can notice a ring of swimming fish interspersed with arrowheads and shells. This view of the south end wall shows a large door for railway access to the interior. Outside the building, the tracks have long ago been removed, but at one time a spur would have led uphill to the CPR, Chippewa Industrial Lead which connects to the CPR Montrose subdivision in the vicinity of Submile 4. Rail access would have been essential to move the station's massive generating equipment components from the fabricator's factories and directly into the generating hall where a pair of overhead cranes could install them. This enormous draft tube support sitting on the flat car is an example of the type of massive castings which could only be delivered by rail transport. This is a device for wintertime ice removal from the power station's forebay. The rail-mounted apparatus suspends a large rack over the forebay wall and down into the water of the forebay. The machine was on tracks which permitted it to drag ice out of the forebay and into the Niagara River. The ice removal machine is in considerable disrepair with much rust. Although no self-propulsion gear was observable, there does appear to be an electric power pickup device, unattached, and sitting loose on the front bumper. This, and the several previous slides, are as close as we get today to anything railway related. This is one of a pair of massive exterior bronze doors. The scale of the doors can be judged by the height of the modern door at the left, which has been recently installed as a part of the restoration work. This is the main generator hall as it looked in 1913 at the completion of the first stage of construction. As planned, the first six of the generators have been installed, and space for the remaining five units can be seen at the far distant end of the hall. The long row of equipment, just to the left of the generators, are electrically operated oil switches. The motors to drive the switches are on the top of the cabinetry, while the actual mineral oil filled switches are inside and out of sight in this view. In this view, taken roughly when the station was purchased by Niagara Parks Commission, we can see the additional five installed generators in the distance as well as a second set of oil switches at the far end of the hall. 
In the operating years, employees started out as cleaners and worked their way up in the staff hierarchy to eventually become technicians, machinists, or operators if they exhibited promise. When CNPC was operating, it was, no doubt, kept in clean condition. I can assure viewers that, today, everything is in brilliant condition as the following photos will show. Just inside the front facade windows, where river water enters the station from the forebay via the underwater arches, we see a set of trash racks on the right-hand side. The rack's purpose was to collect debris such as branches, logs, ice chunks, etc. and to prevent their entry into the turbines where damage could be caused. The rack room had its own overhead crane which enabled racks to be removed for maintenance and trash to be lifted up and off the racks for disposal. Co-founded by USA lawyer William Birch Rankin, construction of CNPC began on May 23, 1901, and Stage 1 was completed at the end of 1904. Although the plant was ready to generate power by the end of 1904, its generators did not operate until July 27, 1905. The plant was constructed in three stages. At the time it opened, the power station was 296 feet 90 meters, in length and housed five generators that were brought into operation between 1905 and 1906. In 1913, the plant was expanded to 600 feet 183 meters, and five additional generators were added by 1917. The 11th and last generator was added in 1924. The generators were rated to produce 100 MVA, or around 102,500 HP. The plant produced exclusively 25 Hz power and operated until 2005 when it closed due to a decline in customers requiring 25 cycle electric power. Demand in Ontario for electricity for use by domestic and most commercial and industrial users had migrated away from 25 cycle power to the more efficient 60 cycle electricity by the 1950s. There remained enough demand for 25 cycle power by certain heavy industrial users for many decades after 1950 to keep the plant producing. It was by then one of the few remaining 25 Hz power plants operating in the world. By the early 2000s, demand had dwindled to around 40% of the plant's capacity. 75% of that reduced production was sold to the Steel Company of Canada in Hamilton to power electric arc furnaces. Most of the remaining 25% of production was sold to Washington Mills in Niagara Falls, Ontario, which used it to produce abrasive products by a furnace process called fused mineral crude ore. Even so, as recently as 2004, the Rankin plant still had some 85 Niagara Falls, New York State customers for its 25 Hz power for industrial processes as well as some unexpected uses such as elevators and movie house projectors.
rocky fell space, great stories into walls of brick and mortar. Generations of men and women worked here to bring electricity to North America. The people look around you, you can see the shadows they've left behind. A century of life and effort, a time spent nurturing the dream of harnessing electricity.
Thank you. 